It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Cancer is a word that strikes fear in most people. Just about everyone has been touched by this disease in one way or another. But according to today's guest, Dr. Ruben Mesa, we have come a long way in treating cancer. And today, cancer patients are living much longer than ever before. Dr. Mesa is a faculty member at the Mayo Clinic. He has been the principal investigator or co-principal investigator in more than 45 clinical trials and has authored more than 300 publications for cancer patients. He's here today to discuss Keys to Cancer Survivorship. Welcome, Dr. Mesa. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Joan. Doctor, leading practitioners such as yourself are more and more recognizing the importance of looking at the whole person when treating a cancer patient, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. In 1961, at the age of 14, my brother was diagnosed with leukemia, and it was 10 days from diagnosis to death. And that was 1961. So Over the course of the past years, what changes have you seen in our fight against cancer? Well, it's a great question, and certainly, uh, unfortunately, particularly back in the 60s, the experience you had with your brother's passing was very common. Uh, Acute leukemia is a prime example of some advances in cancer care. Now we have expectations that uh, young adults, adolescents, and children in particular diagnosed with acute leukemia have an excellent chance of beating their disease. So there have been tremendous advances in terms of how effective our treatment is and how we've been able to match it up better to the needs of an individual patient. So, Doctor, what was once, as we were saying, considered a quote-unquote death sentence now is really more of a a chronic disease in some cancer. So we're going to talk about the 10 keys to cancer survivorship, because this show today is about offering hope to people that have received that diagnosis, who have heard those words, you have cancer. So you say that one of the the most important things is you need to learn about your disease. So how should someone begin the learning process? Cancer is a very complicated disease and really represents dozens of different diseases that can affect people in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of information patients need to know about their disease, how problematic it is, understanding the different options they have for treatment, uh, as well as the parts that they can help to do to help themselves overcome their disease. So learning about their disease is incredibly important. I think it helps to decrease some of the stress and the uncertainty associated with their disease, and it helps them be a, a much more active member of the team along with their physicians and caregivers to decide how best to treat their disease. Well, and that's another key to become your own best advocate. So when my father was diagnosed with lung cancer, I literally would come up with lists of questions. And every time we went to the doctor's office, the doctor would say, okay, give me your list today. And I did, I would give him the list of what we needed to know. So for someone to become an advocate, what does that mean to you, doctor, for the person sitting on the other side of the desk? Well, I think What I hope that patients feel is that they feel empowered to realize that they are a very important stakeholder in how their cancer is cared for, uh, and their uh, their questions are very important. The list model that you had uh, is a great model. You know, there's a lot of information people want to ask. They sometimes don't necessarily remember it off the cuff in the doctor's office. So having that list can be very helpful. It's also important to recognize that In cancer care, there isn't necessarily always just one answer or one choice. There can be more than one choice. Uh, And a patient being uh, empowered to actively be able to voice their choices, their concerns, 
uh, their wishes uh, is a very important part of the process. Following that is another key, and that is to have a friend or a loved one accompany you to the appointment. Why is that so important? Well, I think that the cancer visit with a provider uh, is a very emotional time. It's a concentrated time. Uh, patients have many things on their mind. They may be worried about what their blood test showed or what the most recent scan showed. And there's a lot of information that's uh, discussed in a very short and concise amount of time. Having someone there to, to hear the information as well, uh, to, to be able to help the, the patient later reflect back on what was discussed, think about those options, as well as be there to give emotional support if sometimes good news is, is not forthcoming. All of those things are important reasons that really having a friend, a loved one, a coworker, someone who you value uh, as part of the visit is really quite helpful. Doctor, another key, once you are in the process, I think a natural reaction is for someone to want to withdraw into him or herself, but you say that it's very important to have a relationship with other people, to get involved in community. Why is that so important to healing? Well, I think it can be very isolating to have a serious illness. And sometimes it feels that you're the only person in the world that's facing a similar challenge. As you have seen, uh, and I too have seen, uh, many of my family members have been afflicted by cancer. It is a very, very common struggle. Uh, and it can be very supportive uh, and rewarding to be involved with others facing a similar struggle. One, sometimes you can learn from their experiences and it can really help to decrease your stress. And two, sometimes imparting some of the lessons that you have learned or the wisdom that you have gathered onto others, that, that process as well can be very rewarding uh, and can help someone along their own journey. Two other keys that you mentioned, and I think that these are really important because when you are dealing with something as powerful as cancer, you can very easily make it all about that. So it's very important, as you said, to take care of your caregiver because that person is really devoting his or her life to your well-being and also to take care of the rest of your health. Well, you, you mentioned two key things. One, those that really help to support us, uh, and I use caregiver in a very broad sense, whether that is someone who really does need to help you with some of your activities of daily living, or whether that's someone who's given you emotional support. Recognize that, you know, we have emotional ups and downs as a cancer patient, uh, and to be mindful and grateful to those around us that help us through that journey. The rest of your health is also incredibly important. You know, no individual is just a cancer. That is just a disease that they face. The rest of their health is incredibly important. There are times that they have seen individuals with other medical problems which are really quite serious, you know, be, be ignored or uh, not cared for as well as they should uh, in the setting of cancer and sometimes can become a major impediment to treating the cancer or, or can become very life-threatening in and of themselves. So clearly, uh, our health is, is a balance of many factors, not just about our cancer. And going with that are, are some of the other keys to eat healthy, to exercise and, and be physically active. And the first one, eating healthily, doctor, what should our diet look like and what food should we avoid? For, for each individual, you know, I try to advise them to really eat the healthy diet that they really are recommending for all Americans uh, in terms of being mindful of fruits and vegetables, fats and proteins. Uh, I there has been a lot of effort to see is there one particular food people need to eat more or less of. It's hard to generalize that. Uh, for many cancer patients, it's important that they really get enough calories in, particularly if their disease or their chemotherapy is not uh, is impacting their, their appetite. So working with your doctor and increasingly working with your cancer nutritionist uh, is an important part. And doctor, Finally, you say it's very important to live every moment, to have that zest for life. How can having that passion for life impact someone in a cancer battle? I think it helps tremendously. You know, patients that have something to live for, that really are living their life, uh, one, I think they do tend to certainly uh, have a more successful battle against their cancer. That part of their journey is, is more rewarding. It's more fulfilling for them. 
Indeed, as I, as a cancer care provider, try to learn from my patients, I certainly see what things they value as they struggle against a difficult disease. They value people. They value relationships. They value important milestones, graduations, weddings, baptisms, loved ones. But I see people don't really focus on at the, at the end of their lives are the material things. I've never had someone come to me and say, you know, what I really want is this new car mm-hmm. or this beautiful new home. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about people. It's about experiences. It's about relationships. You know, it's really a lesson for all of us uh, in life as we try to put those things in perspective that have the most value. Doctor, we've been discussing cancer survivorship, but what about prevention? What advice do you offer to help us ward off this disease? There are many things we've learned about cancer prevention. Uh, One, we recognize that many aspects of how we live our lives clearly have an impact. It's been well known and well discussed, of course, things such as smoking, uh, excess alcohol use, or other things that can be harmful to our body clearly can have an impact on increasing our risk of cancers. We also recognize as well that aspect of being physically active and exercising definitely have an impact trying to improve and decrease the risk of many cancers. We're also learning that there are certain individuals based on their families may have slightly higher risk of cancer and we need to be even more mindful in these individuals. Dr. Messa, thank you so much for being here with us today and for reminding us that there's hope after a cancer diagnosis and that the secret lies in caring for the whole person, not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually. If you would like to get more information about this topic, you can visit mayoclinic.com. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.